Hello everybody, welcome to Totally Tabled. My name is Shaggy, and today I'm doing a full solo playthrough of The Bloody Inn. The year is 1831 in France. I'm a farmer from a remote little village that sees numerous travelers pass through. I come up with this great get-rich-quick scheme. I decide to invest in an inn so that I can rob the traveling guests, getting rich without arousing the suspicion of the police. One thing is for certain, not every guest will leave this inn alive. Now, as always, I'm going to teach the game as I play, so I say let's just dive right in. Right off the bat, you can see there are these four rooms in this inn. The first thing that we do each round is we fill up each of the four rooms from the traveler deck. I draw the top card, which in this case is this newsboy, and I can decide which room he goes into. I'm just going to put him right here. And then we just keep doing it. I'm going to put this butcher right there. I'm going to put the monk right there. And the count can go right there. I'll explain the reason why I put those characters in those particular spots a little bit later. Now we get to take two actions, and we have four actions that we can kind of choose from. We can bribe one of the guests, we can build an annex, we can kill one of the guests, and we can bury a corpse of a guest that we've killed. Our starting hand of cards are just these two peasants. The very first thing I want to do is I want to bribe one of these guests. And I want to bribe this newsboy. As you can see, that number, it's a zero. That means I don't have to spend any cards from my hand in order to bribe this newsboy. So he's going to go straight into my hand of cards. Now I have three people who are working for me. And that was my first action. For my second action, I'd like to bribe another guest. This time I want to bribe this butcher. He's got a number three. That means it's going to take three cards from my hand in order to bribe him. And that's exactly the number that I have. So I'm going to spend all three of the cards in my hand in order to bribe this butcher. These two peasants go back and peasants always go on that spot right there. But the newsboy actually stays in my hand. And the reason for that is because of that money symbol near his name. That means that he is proficient at bribery. So when I use him to take a bribery action, he stays in my hand and I get the butcher. So now I'm left with two characters in my hand. I've taken my two actions. That's the end of the round. Now we check for three things. First, we check to see if there's a police investigation. Now we can see on top of the deck a police officer will be coming next round. The police officer has that gun symbol in the top. But right now there is no police officer in the inn, so there's no police investigation. The second thing that happens is the travelers are going to leave. And we'll get a money for any traveler that has stayed in this red room right here with the red key. And so we happen to have a guest who stayed the night in that room, so that gains us one money. And then these two guests leave. They weren't bribed. They weren't killed. They just get to move on their merry way. So as you can see, we kind of want to put cards in this red room that we don't want to use, that we don't want to bribe and we don't want to kill. Then the third thing that we do is we have to pay our wages. We have to pay one franc for each of, uh, of the cards in our hand. So we have two cards, so we have to spend two francs. And that's it. That's the end of the first round. Okay, the next round starts with us welcoming in the travelers. So we have this cop here. I think we're going to put him right there. We might want to bribe him on our side. Ooh, now we have this brewer. You can see there, he's a number three. He's going to be hard to deal with. I think we're going to leave him alone for now. And now we can just fill up these blue rooms like that. And now we get to take our two actions. Now, I wouldn't mind having a little extra money. And so I think I want to bribe a guest for my first action. I want to bribe this Viscount. 
You can see there he has a one, so it's only going to take one card to bribe him. And I'll use my newsboy, and he'll come right back into my hand because he's proficient in bribery. And now for my second action, I want to build an annex. In order to build an annex, you take one of your accomplices that's in your hand, and they're going to go off and they're going to build an extension to the end for you. Now, because he has a one there, I'm going to have to spend one of my cards from my hand. And I'll use this butcher. And normally he would go away. But if you see on the top there, he's proficient at building annexes. And so he gets to stay in my hand. And now I get the special bonus that's shown down here on the card. In this case, I immediately gain six francs. So I'm going to go to 10. These annexes are used to bury corpses, which you'll see here shortly. We get to start with this barn. So we have a one annex right here. I just built a second annex. The number of bodies that you can bury in each annex is equal to the number on them. So right now I have two spots to bury bodies. Again, you'll see that soon. So there we go, that's the end of that round. We're gonna check for a police investigation and there is a cop in our inn. So he's gonna perform an investigation, but there are no unburied bodies. So we're fine. He's not gonna find any foul play. In the solo game, if you have a unburied body, when there's a police investigation, you instantly lose. But right now we're fine. We haven't even killed anyone yet. Now the travelers are going to leave. We had someone staying in our special room there, so we gain a coin. And now we have to pay our expenses. We have two cards in hand. And there you go. We just keep going. Ooh, I really like the special ability here on the Archbishop. It says, from now on, you can bury as many corpses as you want in one bury a corpse action. That can be super useful. For my first action, I'm gonna bribe a guest. But in this case, I'm going to bribe these peasants. And when you bribe the peasants, you get to bribe two of them for one action. They have a zero, so it doesn't cost a card in order to bribe them. And now for my second action, I'm going to bribe this Archbishop. He has a value of three, so I'm going to need to spend three cards. We'll use those three right there. The peasants will go back, but my newsboy stays. And there we go. Those were my two actions. There's a police investigation, but again, I haven't killed anybody. There's no uh, corpses around, so we're fine. He gives us a buck. And we have three people in our hands, so we lose three money. I think we're definitely gonna start doing some killing here. The first thing I want to do is to kill this count. On second thought, I'm gonna kill this monk. And that's gonna take one person to kill, right? They have a value of one, so it takes one card to play. I don't have anyone who's proficient in killing, so I'm gonna lose them. So I'm gonna have this newsboy do the killing. When you kill a character from the inn, you flip them over to their corpse side. And now I have this one unburied corpse. Once I bury it, it'll give me 12 money, but I don't get to collect on that until I've buried it into one of my annexes. And that's gonna be my second action, in fact. Because it's a one, it only takes one card from my hand. I'm going to use the Archbishop, who's proficient in burying, so I won't lose him. And now I can just tuck this, and in this case, I'll tuck it under my barn. The barn can only hold one corpse, because it has a one there, and I immediately get 12 bucks. Go to 19. And there you go. Those were my two actions. No police. I do gain a buck, and I have to pay two. And boy, so we'd have two cops in at the same time now. That's going to make killing a little more difficult. I think I'm going to bribe two peasants. And then I'm going to use them to create an annex with the archbishop. He's a level three, so we'll use these three. The butcher will stay in my hand. 
Police investigation, but there's no bodies. Get a coin. And then I have to pay a coin. The Archbishop is going to not only be able to hold three bodies in this annex, but is giving me this special ability. From now on, you can bury as many corpses as you want in one bury action. That's going to be super useful in the future. Ooh, we got a couple of cheap people here. We could bribe them. Yeah, I think I'm just going to bribe this novice for free and bribe this newsboy for free. There we go. Gain one. Have to spend three. One, two, three. I think I want that Brigadier Chief on my side. I'm going to use these two to get the Brigadier Chief to bribe him. So this novice is going to go away. And now I think I'm going to kill this Viscount with the Brigadier Chief. He'll stay in my hand. Dead. We won't get to bury him yet, but that's okay. Because now there's no cops here to find the body. I don't get a coin here, and I'm going to have to spend three. Uh, it'd be nice to have the bishop on side, but it's a little expensive. I'm going to bribe a couple more peasants. And then immediately kill this shopkeeper. We're going to spend the two peasants and the chief. He'll stay in my hand, but now we have killed the shopkeeper. Now we have two bodies that need to be buried. We'll get a coin here, and then we'll have to spend three. One, two, three. So now we have a little bit of a problem. We have two dead bodies, and we have a cop right there. We could bury the bodies. That would make sense. Or we could just kill the brigadier chief. Okay, I think what we're going to do is we're going to bribe the Brigadier Chief. We'll use these two. The Butcher will go away. I think for my second action, I am going to kill this Baron. There we go. The bodies are piling up. But there's no cops here, so we're fine. Get a coin, and we gotta spend three. One, two, three. Okay, we really need to do something about these bodies. I want to recruit this monk using the newsboy. And then I would like to bury two of these bodies using the monk. So that's a zero and a one, so I only need to play one card. The monk will stay in my hand. And because of my special ability, I can bury multiple bodies. So I'm going to bury these two. We can put one here. And we can put one here. We have space for two more right there. And now we're going to get 12 plus 8, 20 money. So that'll get us to 29. So we still have that body, but that is okay. There we go. That were our two actions. So we get one... And then we have to spend four. One, two, three, four. We have a little bit of a problem here. We need to bury this body or do something about those two cops. Now I wanna show you an action. Instead of taking one of your actions, you can instead pass. And what that lets you do is launder money. So a big part of this game is you're, you can only have 40 francs at any one time. So in order to get more, you need to convert these francs that you have on hand into these sort of checks. And to do that, you need to pass and then launder the money. Each of these is worth 10 francs. So I'm going to pass and then I'm going to launder, since I'm at 26, I'm going to launder 20 bucks, 20 francs. And then we'll go back down to six. And that just takes one of my actions. I can still do my second action. And now I'd like to bury this corpse. I think we'll use these three to do that. So the monk will stay, but these two are going to go away. And now we're getting 26 bucks. These guys, they do a little police investigation, but they don't find any bodies, so we're safe. We're going to get a buck there. And we're going to have to spend two. 
And now that the deck has run out, we're going to shuffle it up, put it back over here, and we're going to run through it one more time. And once we're once we've gone through that entire deck again, the game will be over. Okay, we're not doing very well here, are we? I think the first thing I want to do is kill this representative using my chief. And then I think I'm going to launder my money again. I'm at 31. So it's a little bit close, but I think we'll do it. So we'll go down to one and get three of these. No police investigation. We get one for that. And then we have to spend two. One, two. So we're at zero money on hand, but I think that'll be okay. Okay, I think we immediately need to bury this. Using our monk. It was just a one. That's going to get us 12 money. And now we're all filled up here. We need to build another annex. I think I will get this newsboy for now. We'll get a coin. And then spend three. I think I'll recruit this mechanic using the newsboy. I think for my second action, I'm going to kill this peacekeeper. There we go. We get one, and we have to spend four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Things aren't quite working out. Well, we either need to bury this corpse or kill that major. I say, let's kill that major. Hmm, that's risky. Well, we like a bit of risk, don't we? So I say, we're going to spend those three. This will come back. These two go away. And we're going to kill that major. Then for our second action, we will recruit a couple peasants. Okay, we could be in trouble here. Get a coin, spend four. One, two, three, four. Uh-oh. 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 Oh! Okay. Yep, we just lost the game. <laughs> we just lost the game. Because we have too many bodies here to... We can't kill everybody. Well... Okay, that ended in miserable failure, but we're going to go again. This is a quick game, so we're going to play a second time. We're going to do much better. And this gives me an opportunity to show you how to set up the game for the solo play. You want to put a key of your color and three of a different color. You then want to take the whole deck, shuffle it up, and then remove 26 cards. You get to start with five francs on hand, and one check. You also start with two peasants in hand, and two more peasants go into the bistro. You take your player aid card that has your starting barn, and there you go, you're ready to go. It's that simple. I like a lot of these special abilities, especially on this guy here. Immediately place a room service token next to a key token. From now on, when a guest rents this room, immediately gain money equal to his rank. Really like that special ability. That basically lets us earn a little extra money from these people staying in these rooms. Okay, we're gonna try to take advantage of that right away. First, we're gonna recruit this newsboy, and then we're gonna recruit the concierge. We're only gonna have to lose one peasant. Okay, we get a coin, but we have to spend three. One, two, three. Okay, I think we just want to recruit the mechanic. And then let's go ahead and build this annex. That's going to take two, so we'll use the mechanic and this peasant. Get to keep the mechanic. And now we get to place one of our room service tokens next to one of the keys. And from now on, we'll get money 
once these guests arrive equal to their rank. So we want to put some high ranking uh, people right there. And that can hold two corpses. So that's pretty good. Okay, we don't have any bodies. We get a coin. And then we have to spend two. Let's go ahead and put this Duke right here. And that will immediately get us three money. Because he's a rank of three. Ooh, the distiller lets us avoid paying one of our wages. That could definitely save us a lot of money. Okay, I think we are going to recruit two peasants. I think we're going to recruit this distiller, or do we want to try to recruit the duke? Now, let's go for the distiller. So, that'll be a peasant and the newsboy to recruit the distiller. There we go. Uh, we get one coin there. They go away. And now we have to spend four. One, two, three, four. Okay, we're slowly losing money here, so... We are gonna need... to make some before too long. Ooh. Let's put you there. You can go there. We'll immediately get three money. That's helpful. I think we definitely want to get this annex built here. So we'll use the mechanic and this peasant. That was a two. Okay, now we got lot we got room for five bodies, and we don't have to pay one of our expenses, one of our wages each round. So that is good. What do we want? Do we want to recruit? Hmm. To recruit that abbot. Okay, I think we will. I think we're going to recruit that abbot. So we're going to have to... It's a two, so we're going to have to pay with the mechanic and we'll get the abbot. All right, we get one and we only have to spend one because of our ability. Okay, that worked out nicely. I think we're now ready to do some killing. Okay, that other one's a one, so we'll get those two. Well, we don't have anybody who can do any killing. I think we'll have this newsboy. Let's have the newsboy kill this mechanic. And then we'll just have the abbot bury. That will give us 12. Get one. And we don't have to pay his wage. Ooh, distiller's a two. Okay. Well, we're gonna just take the two while we have it. Yeah, that was a good choice. Yeah, I tell you what, we'll recruit this peacekeeper. And then we're going to use the peacekeeper to kill this brigadier. We're not going to get the one there. And we just have to spend one. Okay, let's put that priest right there and get three. So the abbot can bury this guy. So let's go ahead and do that and get 12. Gets us to 36. I think we'll then pass and Launder this money. Launder three checks here. We got no bodies out. We get one there, and then we have to spend one. Okay, already this is going better. Okay, another cop. Ooh. Oh no, zero. So many zeros, so we don't get anything for that. 
Well, maybe we should just kill some more cops, huh? Seems like a reasonable thing to do. Say we kill this level one. The peacekeeper. I'm sure these are corrupt cops, it's fine. And we'll recruit this newsboy for free. Okay, we'll get one. And we'll have to spend two. Boy, we got some low level people here. All right, that's one. Okay, that's annoying. Well, so let's just go ahead and bury this. Get 12. So these two are all filled up. We have space for two more. We're gonna have to start building some more here pretty soon. And we could recruit this representative. I think we will recruit that representative for one using the newsboy. Okay, we're fine. Get a coin. Have to spend three. Okay, now we have some real recruiting power. I think we'll put the count right there and get two. I might want to recruit that prince. At the end of the game, gain three ranks per check you have. Yeah, this is a big special ability. If we can get a bunch of checks. Right now we already have four. So at the end of the game, this will be worth uh, 12 francs. Okay, I think we definitely want to recruit him. Fine, we're gonna recruit with those three. This guy will go away. Yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna recruit this guy also. It's gonna cost us a little bit of money, but I think it'll be all right. We get one. We're gonna have to spend four. One, two, three, four. Ooh, we'll put this three guy right here. One, two, three. Yeah, let's kill this guy. Takes a two, we'll lose the newsboy. And then let's just go ahead and bury. We'll use the abbot and we'll use that guy. He'll go away. But we'll bury this guy and we'll get 18. Beautiful. We're also going to get one more. And then have to spend two. Alright. That's one time through the deck. Okay. Yeah, let's put the abbot here. And we'll put the distiller here. We'll get those two. And now, first things first, we are going to pass and do some laundering of money. We have a, we're 37 right now, so we'll get three checks. And now for our second action, I think we want to get the distiller. He's going to help the prince build a really nice annex to our inn here. He's rank two, so we could use the representative and then we're going to lose the abbot. But I think that's what I want to do. So the abbot's going to go away, but we will bribe the distiller. We have one point there, and we'll have to spend two. Ooh, that gardener is going to give us three. Sure, we want that guy, so he'll go there. Yeah, we could recruit that cultivator and then build the annex. Okay, sure, let's do that. We will bribe that cultivator and then we'll use these three to create this annex with the prince. Representative is going to go away. Those two will stay. We'll get one and then. Just one. Brilliant. Ooh, we have this duke here. That's three. Yeah, I think we're going to go hardcore. We're going to recruit two peasants and then immediately have the peasants and 
this cultivator kill the duke. And once we bury that corpse, that'll be 26 francs. Sounds good. I'm gonna get one. Don't have to pay. Now hopefully there won't be a ton of cops. And of course. Of course. That'll be two. Okay, so we can't deal with that guy. We're gonna, we're gonna have to recruit. Let's recruit two peasants. And now we can either kill or just bury. Let's just go ahead and bury. So we'll spend our entire workforce here just to bury this. That's going to be 26. Which gets us all the way to 40. <laughs> we would gain one, but we can't. We don't have to pay anybody. So that is that. Yeah, and unfortunately we're gonna miss out on this, so it doesn't really matter. Right away, we need to launder some money. The question is, do we do all 40 or do we save 10? If we do all 40, then we're gonna be pretty low for cash on hand and we might struggle. But because of these two powers, I think we'll be okay. So let's just go ahead and get all of that in check form. Now, because of this annex, we're getting a ton of francs at the end of the game, but it's gonna be out here and we're not gonna be able to go over 40. We are gonna be limited. We're gonna wanna make sure we end the game with as few francs out here as possible so we can take full advantage of that. Right now, what do we have? Eight, 11? That's 33 francs we're getting at the end of the game, if we can hold it. So that's gonna be a big concern. Now I have one more action. I could just recruit somebody. So let's just recruit that novice, I guess. We're gonna get one here and we don't have to pay his wage. Like I said, the game ends when we've gone through this deck a second time. Let's just go ahead and put you right there, and we'll get three for that. All right. Oh, we might not be able to get any corpses this round. I think I'll recruit two peasants. We can hold three more bodies right here. Maybe it's worth bribing one of these. Yeah, we'll bribe that guy. So we're getting one, and we gotta pay two. Hmm. Okay, we'll just get that two right now. You might get killed. You can go there. Uh, two more again. So it looks like we have maybe two more rounds there. Definitely wanna kill and bury. Or do kill, kill, and then next round, bury, bury. Okay, I think we're just going to kill, kill. And next round, we'll bury. It'll be fine. We get one here. Spend two on wages. Ooh, got nothing there. That's a shame. Yeah, I think we just need to bury, bury. Using the novice, that's gonna give us 20. Okay, we got no bodies. Gain one, spend two on wages. Ah, oh, let's go two. Okay. So this is definitely the final round. Well, I think unfortunately, all we can really do is wander this money. It's gonna get us two. And I think that's it. That's all we can do. At the end of the game, because of this, we gain three francs per check that you have. And as you can see right here, we have 13 checks. So we're gonna max that out at 40. It's the best we can do. 
And now you just see how much money you have. So, so we have 130 right here, plus 40, 170. That's our final score. And if we look in the rule book, ooh, 170 francs, demonic innkeeper. Well, there you go, guys. Much better <laughs> than our first game. And that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this full solo playthrough. Two full solo playthroughs. One abject failure, one unmitigated success. That's how we like to do it. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comments. But until then, have a fabulous Halloween, everyone. And goodbye.